Okay, I'm going to go through an example of using the PMT or payment function in Excel. And the PMT function returns a constant stream of payments that are required to bring a loan amount down to a specific amount, usually zero, uh, over a period of time given an interest rate. Okay, so to use the PMT function, I'm just going to go ahead and start typing in, in the cell here. And when I open the parentheses, uh, you can see the tooltip down here. It's telling me that there are five arguments uh, to make this function work. All right, The first one is the rate, and that's the interest rate. Now, when you're given these, you're almost always given an annual interest rate. All right, But you don't make payments annually. You generally make them monthly. So the first thing we have to do is go ahead and convert the interest rate into a monthly rate. You do that by dividing it by 12. Okay. The next argument is the N per or number of periods. That's how many payments are you going to make over the life of the loan. Uh, in this case, we're borrowing money for 30 years. You pay it monthly. All right. So we're going to take the uh, term in years and multiply that by 12. So we're sort of matching the interest rate and the number of periods. Okay. The next argument PV is the present value. That's how much money did you borrow? Okay, and here it's 360,000, so I'll just go ahead and point and click on that cell. All right, the last two arguments are optional. Okay, and generally loans, when you borrow money, you expect that you're going to pay it all back. Okay, so future value, it's, it's optional because Excel is going to assume that it's zero. All right. So uh, I'll go ahead and type that in just, just, for, uh, just for completeness sake here. And then the last argument is the type. It's asking what type of loan are you taking out? And there, there are basically two types. There's the kind where the interest starts accruing immediately. As soon as you borrow the money, uh, the next day you've incurred some interest cost to yourself. Okay, And uh, that type is zero. Most loans are that kind, so we can safely leave this off in most problems. The other kind is where the interest accrues at the end of a period, all right, and there aren't too many loans like that out there. All right? there, are, there are some things called an annuity due uh, that, that do accrue interest uh, at the end of the first period. All right? But if you're buying a car or you're buying a house, the interest starts accruing immediately. Okay. All right, so with that, we're ready to see what the payment is. And uh, this is kind of a, a little weirdness in, in the function. It's giving me a negative number, so it's basically telling me I have to make a negative payment. All right, um, this is mathematically correct because what we're doing is taking this 360000 bringing it down to zero uh, by constantly adding... Uh, negative 21, 29, 54 to it for 360 times. Okay. Um, technically, though, uh, we don't make negative payments. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust this just a little bit uh, so that we can see a positive payment. And so I'm effectively multiplying the purchase price by negative 1 here. And when I do that, uh, it changes it to a number we're more familiar with. Okay. That's the payment that we're going to make every month, 21, 29, 54. Okay, so that's the simplest example. All right, but oftentimes uh, you have a purchase price and you also have a down payment. All right, so I'm going to say our down payment is 20% and modify the function to incorporate that 20% down payment. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get inside the function and uh, the thing I'm modifying here is the present value, and to incorporate the 20% down payment, I'm going to multiply the present value by 1 minus the down payment. All right, so basically I'm saying we're only borrowing 80% of the 360000 Okay. All right, when I do that, we can see that it reduces the payment by about $400 a little over $400. All right, so that is the effect of uh, paying a percentage down on your, uh, on your purchase. Okay, what if they give you a dollar amount? 
Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and change this to dollars instead of a percent. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and say instead of 20%, uh, uh, we're still going to put 20% down, uh, but I'm going to express that uh, in dollars. Okay, all right, so when I do that, automatically it, it changes the function to this horribly big number because we just said that we uh, essentially uh, borrowed a lot more money. Uh, than we really did. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and modify the formula so that that isn't the case. All right, so I'll get rid of all that. All right, now what we do is since we have a negative present value to make it smaller, all right, I'm going to add the down payment to it. All right, and when I do that, we can see that, okay, the payment is the same expressed as a percent or expressed as dollars. Okay, so I hope that helps with the PMT function.